Pony 2012. It's all over the web. Documentary that's gone viral. It's Undoubtedly. Cool. In the last month, tens of millions of young Americans have stepped up to take on a humanitarian crisis on the other side of the world. The attention has been unparalleled, the level of interest unprecedented, and it hasn't gone unnoticed. I'm U.S. Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, and I'm the chair of the African Affairs Subcommittee of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee that meets here in this room on Capitol Hill. In hearings held here, senators have for many years tackled issues of justice, war, peace, and America's role in the world, and in particular, how to tackle the ongoing crimes against humanity committed by the Lord's Resistance Army and their leader, Joseph Kony. It's work that a broad coalition of senators and congressmen have worked on for many years, important work that continues today. Joseph Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army have wreaked havoc in Uganda and its Central African neighbors for more than 25 years. He is now thought to be somewhere in the Central African Republic, possibly the South Sudan, maybe the Congo. But the area is tightening and he has been separated somewhat from his soldiers, which is a good sign. For millions of Americans, the Kony 2012 campaign was the first they'd heard of the LRA's terrible crimes. But many in Washington had been trying for years to get the world to notice and to act. I saw a report way back in 1997 by Human Rights Watch. It talked about the abduction of children by a heavily armed Ugandan rebel group called the Lord's Resistance Army. I was uh, working in uh, Uganda uh, when I found out that, uh, uh, that up north in the area called Gulu, this guy named Joseph Kony had been for about 20 years mutilating kids. I remember knowing about it specifically uh, in 2004 when I in fact traveled to Uganda uh, for the expressed purpose of looking into the terrible orphan situation there and also seeing what I could do about the LRA running rampant uh, at the time through that country. What he did, he'd go out into the villages and he'd kidnap and he'd abduct children turn the girls into prostitutes, and we're talking about 12, 13-year-old kids, and then make soldiers out of the boys. And once the kids learned how to kill people, they had to go back to their villages and kill their parents and all their siblings. If they didn't do that, they cut their lips off and they cut their noses off. It is beyond comprehension that this single man with a relatively small uh, group of followers has been able to uh, just run havoc uh, through this part of the world. Well, I've heard of a lot of tragedies all over the world and in many places in Africa, Eastern Congo and Sudan, of course, Darfur. But this was one of the worst in terms of the brutality. In 2009, frustrated by the lack of progress being made by regional forces, Senator Feingold introduced S-1067, the Lord's Resistance Army Disarmament and Northern Uganda Recovery Act, a bill to make it the policy of the United States to work with governments in the region to stop the LRA and help Central Africa to recover. We have to remember, this isn't just about invading or military action, especially by the United States. It has to do with diplomatic efforts, it has to do with intelligence, and it has to do with restoring the lives and the situation of the people in the area affected, especially northern Uganda. Senator Feingold's bill, the LRA Disarmament and Northern Uganda Recovery Act, which passed in 2010, was a real breakthrough. And a time when there's so much gridlock and partisanship, this is an issue that we had bipartisan support. It passed relatively easy. It was signed by President Obama. Senator Feingold's bill laid the groundwork for President Obama's decision last fall to send 100 U.S. military advisors to Central Africa to help armed forces from Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, and the Central African Republic to hunt down Joseph Kony and the LRA. On my trip to Uganda two weeks ago, I met with some of the special advisors that are United States personnel in Uganda advising the Central African Republic, the Sudan and the Uganda. They're adding a great, con a great bit of ability to the troops over there and a great bit of intelligence. We are currently working with the Defense Department, the State Department, other agencies to try to figure out what we can do and how we can be more effective. And we're gonna continue to work with the State Department and others in an effort to provide the focus uh, on this issue. It may take time. You have to understand the area where he is thought to be is a densely vegetative foliage. It's very hard. There are no roads. There are no telephone poles. There are no lights at night. Uh, he's separated himself from a lot of his followers, so tracking him is difficult. They're getting very, very close. Hopefully, uh, this will be the year. President Obama, Congress, and our U.S. soldiers in the field aren't the only Americans determined to help stop the LRA. 
The Kony 2012 campaign has inspired millions of young people to get involved in a humanitarian cause for the first time. Things that I heard about in 1997, finally the rest of the world's hearing about them. And they're hearing about them because of students and citizens in Africa and across America who have taken the time to watch and learn and share information about Kony. I'm proud of our young people in America who are so compassionate about the African children and the African people. And I'm proud to be a part of a United States Senate that's seeing to it we go after him and try and make sure he's brought to justice. Last month, we introduced a resolution in the Senate SRES 402. In it, we condemn Joseph Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army for their horrific crimes against humanity. We can all work to help victims of war rebuild their lives. We can all work to bring the perpetrators of atrocities to justice. And we can all work to help make the world a better place. We can stop Joseph Kony and the LRA. We just need to keep at it, and we need to keep working together. There are so many people who are, are joining together now that he is literally on the run. I believe we can stop Joseph Kony if we focus on it intently. And we are in the Foreign Relations Committee increasingly going to up our level of that focus. We're going to provide visibility to this issue. We're going to try to push countries and push our own government uh, into recognizing that we have to commit more. It's only a matter of time. Stopping Kony and the LRA is a mission that has deep bipartisan support in the Senate, in the House of Representatives, and in Washington. Our challenge now is sustaining that support. That's where you come in. There's no country on the face of the you know, planet that allows people as much freedom of choice and as much opportunity to go make a difference. Please, stay informed, be engaged. Help make sure that we finish the job that we find Joseph Kony, that we remove him from the battlefield, that we bring him to justice, and that we commit to the ongoing work of healing the communities, the young people, the families, who've been hurt by the crimes of this terrible man and his horrific group. And remember, there's so much more we can and should do in Africa and around the world to promote American values. We welcome your voice, we're listening to your concerns, and we look forward to working together.